Today we're bringing you a preview of a board game based on my favorite comic book series of all time. Thorgal from Portal Games. Whoa, whoa, I'm Mark whoa, La whoa, what? <laughs> I forgot you were here. Of course Just... I'm here. This is a preview video and calling you on your shit is what I do. I don't really need you to call me on my And shit. favorite series of all time? I... When this showed up at our door, you said, what the f is a Thorgal? I, I was trying to spice up the intro a bit you know just kind of give a little flavor this is not a cooking channel less spice more facts get your shit together <laughs> this is why we don't do preview videos like this anymore i heard that thank you okay sure maybe Maybe I didn't know that much about Thorgal when this project started. Much? But... Okay, fine. I, I didn't know anything about Thorgal before this project got started. But since then, I have read one book, and now I know a little bit more than I did. But as far as Thorgal the board game is concerned, I'm practically an expert. Expert-ish. More like an expert in, in training? I, I've played the game what, once or twice. Thorgal, the board game, is a one to four player story driven cooperative experience that has players working together to overcome challenges set before them by the Book of Tales. Now, being that this is a prototype version of the game, I don't actually have a physical copy of the Book of Tales to show you, but I'm told it'll be over 80 pages, which adds up to a lot of adventuring. You see, the Book of Tales is what fuels Thorgal. It's where all the scenarios and stories are kept, but where the adventure takes place is right here on this adventure atlas. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I love a game that uses an atlas for its primary play area. It makes setup a snap, and because of that, games that use the Atlas tend to make it out to our table more often than games that require me to sort through a stack of tiles to assemble a map. Just lay it out on the table, sprinkle on a few scenario-specific components, and boom, you're off to the races. Ready for another scenario? Flip, sprinkle, and go. How easy is that? Now. I know this isn't a review video, but in general, I like story-driven games that don't drown me in excessive narrative. And Thorgal does a really good job of keeping the story short, sweet, and to the point. Yes, there is a larger chunk at the start to set up the scenario, but it reads fairly easily. And the bits of story you encounter throughout your adventure tend to be something like two or three lines of text that fill you in on the consequences of the actions you just performed. Maybe you just defeated a guard, which are represented by these slashy little tokens, and the location tells you to read section 13, which will inform you that the guard you just defeated is a sniveling coward who pleads with you to spare his life. The story will then present you with two options, each of which will result in a different outcome. Choose option A, get a thing. Choose option B, do a thing. That kind of stuff. But it's important to understand that this is not a choose-your-own-adventure kind of game. Your choices don't necessarily take you on a different path, but instead have a more immediate impact on your gameplay experience. Like awarding you a vital resource that you can use later in the game, or removing certain obstacles that are slowing you down, that sort of thing. But, story aside, the thing that really separates Thorgal from those other adventure games is, well, everything else. For example, this action selection system takes cooperative gaming to a whole new level. Okay, maybe, maybe that's a bit much. It takes cooperative gaming to a level that is parallel to games of the same type, but different. What the hell are you talking about? It's like you have these 
actions, see, and the, the order you take them in impacts how good the available actions are to everyone else. Huh? I actually know how to play, and somehow I feel dumber listening to you. Okay, how, how about this? The action system in Thorgal is unique and will require good communications between you and your teammates in order to get the most out of the actions that you take. Go on. This is the action row. From here, players take turns placing these chips below the actions they want to take. Then, once they finish performing that action, the next player picks their action, and so on. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, what makes this process so uniquely cooperative? This is why. You see, actions with this icon will grant you a bonus based on the number of action chips located under other actions to the left of this action. So in this example, if I took the collection action, but my team spent all their actions over here to the right, I wouldn't be able to take advantage of this bonus because there are no action chips to the left of this card. But if we planned out our turn and discussed what we wanted to accomplish this round, then I could have asked my team to play chips to the left of the action I want to take, which would look something like this and allow me to get plus three bonus to my selected action. And that's awesome because by backing each other up, we all benefit. And in the interest of full disclosure, there are also spaces that benefit from having chips stacked in the same area, and others that only grant you a bonus if there is only one action chip present. So now do you see why communication is so important? If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be don't ever underestimate the value of working together to get those bonuses. Because as far as co-op games go, in Thorgal, you really feel that you and your team are working as a single unit made up of multiple parts. And if even one of those parts isn't a team player, you'll feel that too. Brittany? I still think I could have done it alone. Okay, so the action system is definitely something that separates Thorgal from other adventure games. But the other standout mechanic for me has to be the damage system. Let me show you. This is your health tracker. When your character is dealt damage, it comes in the form of these polyomino shapes that you place on the board. The first shape you place can go anywhere, but after that, each damage you take has to be connected to a previously placed shape. And if you ever get to the point where you can't place a shape you're dealt, then you, my friend, are dead. Taking the combat action plays out in a similar manner, except instead of laying shapes out on your own board, you're placing them on these enemy cards in an attempt to cover up these black hearts. Do that and they die. In addition, you'll also earn any bonus you cover up and suffer the consequences of placing shapes on these red and yellow spaces. Consequences which will be listed on the bottom of the card itself. The shapes you place will be determined by the dice you roll and the dice you roll will be determined by the level of your combat dial. The higher the dial, the better the dice. The polyomino shapes are also used when taking the journey action, which is a whole other minigame on its own where players lay down these crazy shapes to traverse a bizarre checkered landscape full of red and yellow pitfalls in an effort to collect much needed resources that can be used to fulfill requirements of various locations scattered across the map. This brings us to the assign action. The assign action lets you deposit the required amount of resources on a location to trigger the action or story associated with it. Which, if you think about it, is kind of how Netflix works. If, if they accepted or and wood instead of money, that is. Babe, did you pay the Netflix bill this month? I need to know what's happening with Love is Blind. I'm on it. This journey track here can also be improved as you play, and will determine what shapes you can place on the journey track that I mentioned earlier. It also unlocks access to some cool abilities specific to your character. Movement lets you move your character around the map. No real big surprise there. 
The collect action allows you to collect resources from the terrain cards without having to take the journey action, which is a great way to collect resources that you passed by earlier in your journey. Crafting is pretty much an item card shopping spree that lets you choose from any of these face-up item cards, which offer up powerful one-time bonuses for all kinds of different things, like extra dice when attacking, healing for your characters, movement bonuses, etc. And there's no limit to how many of these you can have. It's nice to play a game that isn't stingy with its power-ups. I mean, collect enough of these and you feel like you're playing in god mode. But that's not to say that the game is easy. Oh no. <laughs> you see, in Thorgal, time is always working against you. Each scenario will have a certain round limit, and if you don't get done what needs doing by the time the last round ends, you lose. You also lose if anyone on your team dies, or if any scenario-specific events reach their conclusion. Based on my personal experience, being successful at Thorgal isn't about doing as much as possible. It's more about strategizing with your team to tackle the locations that are best suited to achieve your goals. Speaking of which, these are locations. The majority of the game revolves around accomplishing the tasks listed in these spaces. And in many cases, this involves delivering the required resources to fulfill the listed order. Kind of like Uber Eats the uh, quest game. Filling those orders will more than likely lead you to a story section, which will earn you a bonus of some sort that inevitably helps you along your journey. But get two greedy filling orders and you'll find yourself out of time to stop the big bad. Each character in Thorgal plays the same. But they each have their own unique abilities, starting items, and upgradable tracks that unlock benefits and combat dice combinations specific to that character. Once all four chips have been flipped over, the player phase ends and we move on to the terrible things happen to good people phase, also known as the event phase. Seriously, nothing good comes out of these things. You see, at the end of the round, you'll resolve whatever terrible effects appears on the bottom of the currently active event card. Then, once that's done, you'll flip over a new card and suffer the consequences listed at the top of that one. And this trend continues every round until you die. Ahem. What? It also ends if you succeed. Well, obviously, but you're probably gonna die. Mark. Or run out of time, which I assume results in a public execution of some sort. Mark! Okay, all jokes aside, the challenge in Thorgal feels absolutely fair. It's Brittany that's the problem. What? And we're back. <laughs> My apologies if I m misspoke. What I meant to say was, if your group is anything like mine, you won't realize how important teamwork and Thorgal is until you've tasted defeat for the first time. And I guarantee you, after that happens, you won't even consider a pee break before discussing the consequences of doing so with everyone at the table. If Thorgal, the board game, sounds like a game you'd be interested in, check it out on GameFest. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.